All right, so this uh, lecture is on uh, t-values because statisticians love their letters. We've got the z's, we've got the t-values, we've got our r-scores. We use all the letters. <laughs> Physicists, we like the Greek letters. So when we discussed uh, standard deviation uh, in earlier lectures, we made some assumptions, right? We assumed uh, a central tendency in our data. We assumed that it was symmetric around the mean. We assumed it fit a Gaussian curve. And we also, and this was a little more implied, we assumed that we knew what the real standard deviation was when we started to apply standard deviation to uh, uncertainty calculations. So in this formulation here, um, we assumed that we knew what this was. Okay, but with a small data set, we don't really know what that was. Like if we look at this example, I could find out what the standard deviation of this PDF in the blue line is, but this histogram uh, is going to, I can calculate a standard deviation there, uh, but it's not really giving me a standard deviation of the data. It's giving me a standard deviation of, the, of an assumed data set. Um, we need to take that into account when we calculate uh, our uncertainties. We don't really know what that sigma is um, if we don't have a whole lot of data points. And if we have less data, that's going to make a difference for our uncertainty. We need to either lower our confidence level um, in terms of where that next point will fall, right? If we're going to say, I'm 95% sure it's going to fall in this range, Maybe we say, oh, okay, now because I don't have enough data to really know what sigma is, maybe I'm 85% sure uh, it falls in that range. Um, and the little orange guy, <laughs> his confidence level is always going down, poor fellow. Uh, our other option, and if we don't want to change our confidence level, is we can increase the size of the uncertainty. And that's what we're going to do more often because we want to have a 95% uncertainty. That's sort of a standard engineering practice. Um, but since we don't know exactly what sigma is, we're going to calculate a sigma that we think is close to it, but then we're going to multiply it by a bigger number in order to get to the same confidence level. That's what a t-score is. Okay, A t-score comes from a t-distribution, which is another curve. Um, this black curve here is a Gaussian curve. Um, the other colors are uh, are T distribution curves, and you can see they're shorter and fatter. There's an assumption that you're going to get more values farther away from the mean um, with these other curves. And that's the kind of assumption we're going to make. We're less, uh, we're going to assume that there's more scatter uh, than we're seeing because we don't have a lot of data to understand how exactly how much scatter we have. And so we're going to rewrite our uncertainty uh, instead of using z, we're going to use t, which is a function of um, the percentage, but it's also a function of nu, of the degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom is very closely related to um, n, and I'll talk briefly at the end of this lecture about what, how we calculate or what degrees of freedom means. Um, but it's going to be, for our purposes, it's going to be n minus 1. So n is 2, my nu is going to be 1, n is 3, my nu is going to be 2, and so forth. Um, as n and nu get bigger, uh, as if they approach infinity, um, these t distribution curves basically turn into a Gaussian curve. Okay, um, And so we're only interested in t scores if we have a relatively finite set if we've got basically fewer than 50 data points, which is most experimental situations. So how do we use a t-score? Well, to use a t-score, we instead of saying, oh, I'm 95%, my z is 2, uh, you have to look up your z. You have to look up your t-score. Um, and we can do that on a table like this over here. And in this case, we'd be saying, okay, I want a 95%, so I'm going to follow this down. Let's say I have six data points. I'm going to go, or seven data points. Seven minus one gives me a degrees of freedom of six. I'm going to go over here. Oh, I'm going to, my 
T score is 2.447. And so I'm going to multiply um, my sigma not by 2, but by 2.447 to make sure that I'm 95% confident uh, about where my next data point is going to fall. Okay, so that's, that's the old fashioned way to do it. The new fashioned way is to look it up uh, on a T-score calculator. Uh, and this one here is a pretty uh, basic one, um, but it looks like this. And so in this case, I could enter in my degrees of freedom, enter in the, prob the confidence level that I wanted, uh, and click Submit, and it will pop out my T-score there, which for some reason it calls X. Uh, whatever. <laughs> it's, uh, I think you'll figure it out once you start to, uh, start to use it. Uh, if you're confused about how to use one of these calculators, just put in a number that you know. Put in uh, uh, degrees of freedom of 100 uh, and 95% and you should get a 2 um, because we know that's going to be, for a large number, a large N, um, we're going to have a, 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 a T-score of 2. Uh, for 95% confidence, okay? Um, you can also use a spreadsheet, uh, and I've just got a little picture up here about how to do that down here. Uh, one trick, and this is true for both Excel and Google Sheets, um, the, the probability in some statistics uh, is the inverse of, 90, of the confidence level. So, um, and that's called a significance level when you use that inverse. So our significance level here is 0 0.05, which equates to a confidence level of 95%. And so in this one here, um, I put in, uh, let's do this one. I put in my confidence level um, as a 0 0.05 significance level. I put in my degrees of freedom. And again, it pops out my T-score for that combination. So multiple ways. This one is useful when you're doing a lab spreadsheet, right? When you just want to calculate that uh, on a fly and you want to make sure that you, can that you can change that number if you need to. So that's useful to use. So we use T-values when we report our uncertainty using standard deviation of the mean as well. Um, and this is an important point uh, for our lab reports, because most of the time when we take multiple measurements of something, we're trying to find one single value, right? If I want to know the mass of a squirrel and measure that mass 10 times as it scatters around on my, uh, on my, <laughs> my scale, causing all sorts of uh, random variation, um, I, the thing that I'm interested in is that mean value. I don't really care about the individual uh, measurements. Uh, in that case, standard deviation of the mean is the thing that's going to describe to us uh, what my uncertainty is. Okay, and that's going to look uh, like this uh, with a t value, um, where this is my degrees of freedom here, this is my confidence level. So I'm going to look up a t value, uh, multiply it by that standard deviation of the mean, and that's going to we translate that like this. If I took another data set with n data. Uh, my new mean would fall within this range, okay? And so that, this is a, a key expression for our practical lab reports, because we'll use that a lot. One last thing, just to talk about what degrees of freedom means. Um, <laughs> here's a definition. Um, and <laughs> if you're like me, uh, you get about halfway through that sentence and you think, oh, I, don't, I don't even know what that, I don't know where that's going. Um, so what does it mean? Well, in, in short, it's kind of telling us if I'm taking a, um, some kind of statistical average or a linear fit, um, how many data points there actually are independent once I know what my result is? Um, so let's say I'm trying to, I, I know that my mean value of three data points is 10 til kilograms. Um, the first point could be anything. I don't know anything about that, but let's say it's eight. Uh, the second point could be just about anything. Um, uh, and so it's free as well. That's, these are the degrees of freedom. 
So that's two points that are totally free. But once I know those two points, that third point that has to be 11, right? In order to have uh, an average of 10. Uh, and so that last point is not free. And that's what the two degrees of freedom means. And in different, like when we do a linear fit, uh, nu actually becomes n minus two because um, there are, you need a third point before you actually have a free point when you, when you draw a line because two points just draw one line. Um, and so don't, we can't really do any statistical analysis of that. Um, and so that's what degrees of freedom are. But it's not a big point for us, right? Just know that it's very connected to n uh, and it's usually going to be n minus 1 and sometimes n minus 2 for us. But even if you used n, um, it's not going to change our values a lot. All right, that's it for this one.